Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first GA Museum Book Club chat of 2022. So the first one of the new year. And we've had two months to read this book, so um, which is good because it's a, there's a lot in it. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for taking the time to watch. And I am delighted that our first guest this year is Liam O'Donoghue, who is the author of the fabulous book we just read, Semple Stadium. So it's a huge uh, undertaking to write such a book. Um, uh, um, a place with huge history, um, so di I'm sure very difficult to to do some research, put it all together in a readable format. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. So I'm going to start, Liam, by first of all, congratulations on the book. Um, and you're very welcome. We would like to start, I suppose, by chatting about why you undertook such a huge task, how you went about it, um, and I suppose the time that it took you to put everything together. Hi, Julianne and listeners. And uh, yeah, the, it was back in uh, February 2019 when uh, O'Brien Press first contacted me about the, the, doing a book on the Semple Stadium. It wasn't themselves um, contacted me. They did it through uh, Michael O'Mara, who was a friend of mine. He was secretary of Tipperary G, South Tipperary GAA. And um, they were looking. They were doing a series of books. I think at the time, they had done on stadia and uh, venues like that. They had done Lansdowne Road, and Croke Park had been done. A lovely book by Tim Carey. So um, they had an eye on Semple Stadium, and um, uh, Michael O'Mara told them that if there was anyone going to do it, that uh, there was a possibility I might that I should be asked. So. Uh, I was very busy at the time. I was working on a book uh, I was doing on my own club, Thurla Sarsfields. I was writing their history. I had the volume one brought out in 2015, and I was anxious to finish out volume two. So I was coming towards the end of it. I had never really thought about doing a book on the stadium, even though I'd spent so much time there. But it was, I suppose, an obvious one for me to take on, Julianne, yeah. Yeah, and that's due to, I suppose, your background. Can you tell us a little bit about, I suppose, your own experience with Semple Stadium? Well, my own experience with Semple Stadium was, I suppose, to go back a bit further. I was always fascinated, say, with the, the printing process. I remember at school in Thurla CBS in the early 60s, looking at for the copiers of the time and the Gestetners, and, the, and I was fascinated by that printing process. And then when I went into teacher training in St. Patrick's College in Drumcondra at the end of the 60s, I was secretary of Uncommon Gaelic there. And they brought out a booklet or a magazine every year. It was called Bochus. And I edited it um, in 1968. And it was, I suppose, the first publication I was really associated with. I taught in Dublin then in Ballymun for up to the mid-70s. But 76 saw me back in Tipperary again. And I, be I was became, as well as being a principal teacher in a rural school outside Thurlis, I was secretary of Thurlis Sarsfields GA Club. And one of the jobs of the secretary was to edit the match programs for Semple Stadium. So for the next 10 years, I put together match programs for all the matches in the stadium. So I became very familiar with the place altogether. Wow, I'd say so. And, uh, I suppose I'm a real hoarder. I, collect things and photographs and from then on I was kind of putting things aside so when I came to do the book on Semple Stadium I wasn't really starting from a, a blank page I had a, a lot of old stuff an awful lot of memories I had wow. I had um, I was very interested in the game and uh, I was great at listening to people talking and I I was different to a lot of the fellas of my time I of my time I loved um, older people's company. Right. I would uh, I enjoy more than sitting listening to old hurlers talking. And I retained a lot of that because I was fascinated with that era that was there before me, the 30s and the 40s. And the astrologers be yeah. talking about those matches and games and all of that in Thurlis and the great reputation and the legendary players of Mackey and Ring and all that and the great contests. And... Um, that was all in my head, and I suppose when O'Brien Press came, then um, it's it stayed in my mind for that year. I never gave a reply to them till they came back later on in 2019. I was on a holidays. So we, we went on holidays myself and Catherine. We were over in the the Balkans, and we were driving a, a lot. Lot it took a lot of 
long drives from city to city. We were in uh, Montenegro and Bosnia and, oh. and and Croatia and those places. And while we were driving along these buses, you could be in the bus for maybe three hours, three or four hours. I was getting bored of that, so I I I just take out a bit of paper from my pocket and I started jotting down every memory I could think of of Semple Stadium as it went on. Every thing I saw, every photograph and. And it kind of built up, and that was the start of my research. When I came back, I started slotting these into decades and things like that. So it was starting to fall into place, and I had to put together a plan. I, I had done, I suppose I should tell you, in 2015, um, Tom uh, Semple, uh, Semple Stadium is called after him, and the Semple family asked me to do a biography of uh, Tom Semple. So... Um, so you had that information as well on the stadium as well. So I had that that I brought out that in 2015. The ah oh, wow, sample and the Thurless Blues, and as I sent you, I had the first volume of Thurless Sarsfield's GA history uh, brought out at the time. So I know I had an awful lot of homework done already for the Sample Stadium book. I was lucky I had because I did up the plan and submitted to O'Brien's, and they were happy. To go with it they were really uh, very supportive about it all the way through and then uh, by early 2020 i had agreed to take it on and to do it so um wow like a, a dream for the publisher that you could do it especially when you had you know, all of that I stuff. all that stuff yeah but then the COVID came in the way mm. of it you know as we went into march and lockdown and all of that so all the libraries and archives were closed of and uh, I thought maybe I was being lazy. I got onto what Brian said. I said we'd have to call a halt to this project, you know, until COVID is out of the way. But they were anxious to proceed, and and um, we went ahead with it anyway. And while I had a pile of books here at home in the house, um, I knew I hadn't enough of sources. And even from all those uh, memories that I had, like I had to put flesh in the bones of all those memories and see where they came from and how real were they and all of that. So I'm involved in um, Lorna Park at the GA Museum in Thurles. So during the early COVID, that was all locked down as well. Mm. But I had the key of the place, Julian, and I, I took in a few big uh, shopping bags, big, big little bags one day, and I knew there were plenty of books in there. So I went in and I brought out, I filled the two bags anyway with, with hurling books. Wow! We brought them back out, back out home here, and for that summer, um, I went through the, all those books. I, we went on holidays that year down to La Hinch. We went to Dingle afterwards, but I'd bring ten or twelve books with me, and I'd skim through them for references to Thurles and games in Thurles, and I'd earmark those and take a note of where they were, and all that information was building up. I'd also over the years done an awful lot of research in uh, uh, the source, the local history library in Thurles. And they were a great source of help to me in all the books that I have done because, and the Tipperary Star, the local newspaper in Tipperary is a great source of information on the matches. And I had gone through every Tipperary Star from when the first one that came wow. out up to the most recent ones. So I had a pile of, pile of stuff here, I suppose, the, um, when I came to to write the book then to, through um, the autumn of 2020 and the spring of 21, the research was done and uh, I started putting the chapters together. O'Brien Press were great as well. They were very supportive in that they gave me um, a secretary, uh, not a secretary, uh, an editor. They are nice. Nicola Reddy and... Um, she was brilliant to work with, so supportive and encouraging. And that was great because most of the other jobs, uh, books I've done, is really a kind of a solo run. You're on your own and can be a lonely old place. Yeah, to be in definitely. Just isn't all fun, like this heavy old going in research and all that. And Yeah, and there's a skill in distilling it all down and, you know, yeah, putting it in an order. Yeah. Indeed. And um, we did the we did that and uh, she was she was great and she was she's a waterford lady and um she even though she's interested in hurling she wouldn't be a died in the wool ga fan you know right that's so probably I, no harm because you need someone to step yeah. back a little bit and, 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 that in particular period. because she could ask the question like what did you mean there or, yes 
Um, what do, could that be put another way or yeah, um, all that, you know, or have we that in already or, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's very uh, interesting. The whole That's a really fascinating story and a good lockdown project compared to, I'm sure, what many of us did. So at least you have. It's just uh, great because I found myself, I could spend hours at it and was, I was really taken away from the, the, the drudgery and yeah. the depression of um, of uh, COVID and all that going on during that serious lockdown of yeah. 21, you know, so was yeah. with it. Uh, and the photos, like that's a huge part of the book between, well, the images, I guess, the photos going back to very old photos right up to today, but then yeah, also yeah. the programme um, covers and the, and the newspaper yeah. pieces as well, like they really add to the book. I do with the photos. I have a great love of photographs, um, especially named photographs. I yeah. try to uh, caption and name every person that's in it. I noticed that because a lot of books would be just the Tipperary team or the yeah. Galway team. No, yeah, it's I fascinating. Like that because um, I suppose uh, using, using, being a teacher, I suppose we were always encouraged to have something visual mm -hmm. when you were talking about something. And I love pages. I hate pages full of just print. And then, uh, the visual, I think, attracts you to a page, makes explains this, it tells its own story. Uh, it does, and you can even see yeah. the way, even the programme covers the way they change throughout yeah. the years. Well, I, I see them as little works of art, and I, yeah. I see the way they progressed along. And the old photographs, like the oldest photo in the book is, uh, I think it's 1888, the invasion team. The invasion tour, yeah. Team, and you see the gear and the way they're turned out and the some of these eras, they have moustaches, and then they're yeah, all done. Yeah, an see amazing photo. Different, different, yeah, they, they tell, a, tell a great story. And yeah, they do. In fairness to people, like this, if you put in a photograph, they everyone likes to see their name up there, you know, and uh, we got most of them named, and most of them right. I didn't get them all right. You get an odd one um, has come to me, and there's an odd... All the names are there, they might be in the wrong order. Yeah. Of, and, and that, uh, that's it, like you never right really think get that fully really right. Most of them right. Anyway, and it was great working with um, Ray McManus. I suppose for the older photographs, I, as I said, since the time I was, I was compiling match programs, I had lots of photographs, or I knew where they were, where to get them. And um, the, the examiner, the Irish examiner, it used to be the Cork examiner. Their archives, I, I got uh, a lot of the old photos of Ring uh, there and yeah. their fabulous photos in the photo that's on the cover. And uh, for the more recent ones, my friend Ray McManus of Sports File, he came on board. I've known him since the 70s from him coming to Thurless. And for a Dublin fella, he has a huge, huge interest in the GA and in the hurling in particular. You know, he's a great guy to meet You know, when he comes to Thurless and... and I was able to slot into his collection, which is marvellous, and to relate the photos to the matches or to the characters. A huge work, though, so, like very time consuming. And, you know, as you say, a slog sometimes to those kind of the writing, I guess, is nice, but it's the matching photos to stories and to, yeah. that does take time. Yeah, it's very, it's an it's amazing. But the, the photos surely enhance the book. You know, I'm sure you've got great feedback on the photos. I did, yeah, and some people remark on the, the bits of poetry. Uh, yes. Um, that, um, and there's some lovely just quotes, the Con, Con Houlihan piece is lovely, um, and there's right. a guy from Limerick, um, oh, what was his name, Vincent, um, Vincent, Vincent Hanley. Hanley, yeah, that piece is lovely as well. That's special, isn't it? Oh, special, yeah, really yeah. lovely, and I, had, yeah. I hadn't come across it before. The, yeah, they, it, it does, but when I was, I suppose, reading the book and trying to think how to frame the discussion i i can understand why you you did it by decade you know it's obviously the logical thing but there's also i suppose themes because you're trying to talk about the history of a stadium which is nearly like a mini town in itself you know i know from working here for so long in crow park like there's lots of characters and lots of different things so as well as your matches you've got the other events like you have a lot on fela uh, and then, you know, there's um, the, the, the history and the foundation and how the formation of the stadium came about. So that's a huge topic. And then you have the characters. So the caretakers, the groundskeepers, uh, you know, even things like then the colour. So the bands on the match day. So there's little themes going through it. So, um, you know, it was a huge undertaking, but I think worth it for the fact yeah. that you, you, you know, took the time to do the that. Atmosphere, like the, the game is really... 
I know it is a big part, but in another sense, it's just a small part. It's just an hour in the day. You yeah. have the scenes downtown yeah. and the celebrations and the atmosphere and the the accounts of coming to Thurlisse during the emergency and trying to get there when there were shortages of um, petrol and restrictions and all those kind of things. And Yeah, the story about the petrol, the, the priest, is very priest. funny. Yeah. It is, it is indeed, yeah. 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 Those little blue kind of boxes, was that a decision just to, to put them in, I suppose, to add a bit of colour as you went along? I Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Adding colour, I think, and the little colour pieces. I loved the, the descriptions that people wrote. Um, I suppose in that search that I did, I tried to get um, uh, all the accounts that I could have uh, of people's memories of Thurlis. And we had them going way, way back into the the 20s and before what was like what the atmosphere was was like even like journalists were great like Maliki Clerk and Paddy Downey the Irish Times people like that Sean Kilfeather and Con and Kevin Cashman and well Raymond Smith was a particular favorite of mine he lived in Thurlis and he was a great journalist and writer and he did that Decades of Glory book back back in the 60s and he really made, he was able to capture that atmosphere of yeah. he made it kind of a legendary place. It wasn't an ordinary place anymore. And his great description of it was where he'd love to die, Julianne, to, to, to die on the, the Kalainen end in, in, in Thurlis, uh, halfway through a, a monster final. Wow. You know, and to be carried by the crowd down along and to be laid out on the sideline and the match to go on around him. That's and powerful. This, this was his dream, you know, Raymond, and just the, 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 the great imagination. Yeah, fabulous. It was a fabulous place to write about because it was so iconic and it meant so much. And wh why do you think, like, it's described well through Con Houlihan's words as, you know, the Mecca? Or why do you think it is? Or how did it all come about? The the magic surrounding sample. Well, uh, well, I suppose. Uh, the foundation of the GA in Thurlis like ingrained the place Thurlis yeah. in, uh, in people's minds. And um, uh, as the GA then spread into possibly every every parish in the country, like the name, it took on took on an aura that this was the place, all the big decisions to do with the, the GA for the first 25 years, all the congresses, all the major meetings were held in Thurlis up to, to 1909, the first 25 years. So an awful lot of stuff was happening. And then, as, as you'd see in the account, like the, the GA people in Thurlis were anxious that there'd be a, a pitch in Thurlis like that would accommodate the games and, and Thurlis being central and all of that in Ireland. Um, it was a kind of an easy place and you had the, the rail access and road access to the place and all those things help, helped. And, yeah, uh, the transport I thought was interesting. There was a lot of good stories about transport and how people got to the stadium. You know, that's obviously changed, but there was the bicycle uh, match and, you know, the priest and, and the petrol. There was great and stories. The guy about the, that had his lorry hired out and he'd bring them, the, like you, just, you read about human trafficking uh, um, at the moment, you know, the, the major crime it is, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, Lads was bringing lorry loads of people, say from North Tip down to Thurlis or from Clare over, or the people yeah, yeah cycling, cycling from Clare. Uh, yeah, that's the yeah, because it's it was you know, suppose you had to. It was nearly a pilgrimage. It wasn't as easy as hopping in your car. It, it you had to make your plan, and you could be gone for a few days, I suppose. Indeed, and um, you see the 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 hurling and the GA matches of the time, like. Uh, I think one line in the book is that there were kind of a beacon in the, the dreariness of the emergency time during the Second World War in particular. Yeah. And brought great entertainment to people. And they were talking about it for a month before and a month after, you know, you could say it really kept them going like the, the, the hurling and the descriptions. And you, you're awfully yourself. I'm you awfully, too, yeah. You, yeah. You, you weren't too, your people weren't too far away like that. No, we weren't. And actually, I was looking because I suppose like everyone, you're looking through the, the book for the matches you were at and that you remember. But because yeah. I suppose we were Leinster, we weren't there too much. But I did. My dad is Kiltormer, so I was at that match in '92. Right. Um, and then I remember obviously the replay against Clare for uh, you know from Offaly in, in 
1998. So that was a, a yeah, huge... Yeah, well, that's possibly one of the, the better matches uh, I've seen in the stadium. That's the third meeting in 98. Yeah, I kind of, I remember it like, um, well, I, I, probably looking back, it's probably not what happened. But in my head, you know, it was a lovely day. I do remember being in Thurless beforehand yeah. and it was a great atmosphere because the whole situation was so unusual. It was, yeah, and um, I remember Joe Dooley that day, he had the most extraordinary performance and he was coming towards the end of his career, he was possibly 35 or 6 at the time and he really shot the lights out, you know, that, that day, he really went to town and um, yeah, it was a tough old year on Clare that year, was, they, yeah. they could claim to have won the match in Grove Park, the second, the replay. Yeah. But anyway, that's the way it worked out. They were quite magnanimous about it all. They were, like looking back yeah, on it now, it seems strange. There. You know, I, I used to love in the stadium seeing the, the new teams come in like Clare when they came in 95. Yeah, that was the most wonderful occasion there to see them and the joy and Sir yeah. Lachnan and um, the characters. Uh, uh, all the characters of the time. Anthony Daly going up the, st to the steps for the cup and um, you had Tony Considine singing lovely roads of Clare and all the atmosphere of all that. Um, Watford came afterwards there in the start of the the new millennium, say, but uh, and there were great games. Like you had great characters like John Mullane and Dan Shanahan and great displays by a fellow I used to love watching, hurling Ken McGrath. He was a most marvelous hurler. I met him a few times since then. No, but we it's great to see. Great team, new teams coming up and people trying to make a breakthrough, you know. Yeah, yeah. All, and all part of the history then at the stadium too. They're all yeah, adding too. to it. Um, yeah. How many match reports do you think, or match summaries are in the book, do you think? I have no, I have no idea, no idea. I was trying to no. count them, but I, I couldn't. <laughs> like there's something that uh, I did it chron chronologically in a yeah. sense, like it's in decades and uh, I find that easy for people to find uh, to find their track yeah. those as a fine index at the back of it. So I think kind of chronologically, that's the way I'm, I work, my brain is works, you know, Yeah. and I find it's the easy, easiest way, you know. Um, and did you, like, how when you came to a match you knew you were including, how did you go about, you? obviously maybe you remember some yourself and then for them, those you don't remember or weren't there for, was it through newspaper reports or how do you remember? Newspaper re reports, yeah, and uh, some of the, um, the provincial council histories and things like, like that, the, the Munster, like the two volumes of Mon all the Munster games, you know, they would reinforce what you possibly already know and well to get the scores and get a few details correct because yeah you know, yeah to, and yeah i know from being here in the museum it, there's one thing wrong somebody will notice it straight uh, yeah, away yeah, it's a win. yeah nobody tells you when it is right you know exactly <laughs> that's a hundred percent you know and did uh, you mentioned at the start of in your introduction that the stadium, I suppose, developed through far-sighted people, um, like who constantly modernised the stadium, and, and you know, I suppose, found ways to get funding. Do you think that's important to where Semple is today? It is, yeah. Um, the people that uh, run Semple Stadium over the years, they 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 showed great leadership and and took difficult decisions because there were difficult decisions like to to go into major debt over yeah. um, development and all of that like um, and then to to survive the debt and move on in every in every generation it has to be upgraded because uh, these places they they eat up money you know and mm -hmm. uh, as uh, irish people have uh, the, the economy has grown they expect more they like more comfort and that's great to see and we've been always in the stadium trying to upgrade and and move with the times as it as it were and we have to and people demand demand uh, better things and the people are prepared to pay pay extra for those things as well you know but the, yeah I, I thought it was interesting like you included obviously the floodlights and then Hawkeye so there's always I suppose something around the corner but there is yeah and even COVID has put another expansion on hold there as we come again yeah towards towards the end of it but it, we were lucky it took great great courage of people to to take on the, the these projects and um i suppose failure it was a reason like we had developed in for 84 
uh, the centenary all Ireland yeah. and all that there and major development there which left a, a major debt onto Prairie so Bela wouldn't have happened only for that that debt and when I meet people anywhere and they hear I'm from Thurlis, um we talk Hurland or we talk Fela. Yeah, it kind of opened the stadium up to maybe an audience that yeah, wasn't GA. Yeah, it was, they mightn't be GA people, but yeah. the, 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 the fabulous memories of, of Thurlis. Uh, they came of, became of age there at the yeah. concerts. There were the biggest rock concerts in Europe, say, those years, uh, some 90 to 94. I was looking at the first one and it was Meatloaf, which is, uh, you know, it, timely right, yeah. now after he died in this week. Yeah, um, I was never there. I, I, I kind of just missed it. was just before my time. I, pres I presume you were there. I was, yeah. I was on the committee there that was involved in in um, bringing, the, bringing it and organize, organizing it. MCD were the, the concert yeah. promoters and all that. But it was the most fabulous time, sure. I never thought we'd hear the likes of Meatloaf or, or, or the, any of those great bands that came at the time, you know. Oh, it's a part of Irish history. So it's great that's all included, you know, in the stadium because they are so much more, I suppose, than than just matches. Um, is there any character that stands out for you in the book or, or someone that you, you enjoy talking or learning about? Well, I suppose um, on the great hurlers back along the, you know, you'd be fascinated with, with, say, the likes of Mick Mackey and uh, Christy Ring, you know. And while I, I saw Christy Ring towards the end of his career, like he had a huge impression on people's minds at the time. And so many extra people came to the matches just to see Christy because of that magic that was uh, about him. Yeah. Like a, a match was never over, like, you know, and while he was still in the field, you know. You know, he was, and uh, Mackie, I met Mick Mackie. I was lucky enough, um, say, over the years, I would have met a lot of the hurlers back along. I met, I would have known, say, John Maher, who captained the the winning team in 1945. I would have known Jim Lanigan, who, who was there in 37, captain. I would have known uh, John Joe Cannon, who captained 1930. And he right. was, he was, it was just accidental. You never know, like when you're growing up, who's around you, who's beside you, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, John Joe Callan, he was um, an umpire in Bloody Sunday and uh, who've wow. chosen an interest in yes. himself. And uh, Bob Mochler from the Hearts and Jockey were umpires at one end. There were two synods, I think, from Wexford, the umpires at the other end. But um, to be in his company, but you don't realise at the time no. we were talking to, like it was just his sons I was friends with and we used to go for a few pucks and training together, you know, and all that. It was only years afterwards I discovered who he really was, like the his story. Wow. His story, you know, I was fascinated with That's the great guys. thing about the GAA too, isn't it? The connection yeah. with the generation. And did you play in Semple? Oh, I did. I played club hurling. Like I, I was a club hurler with the uh, third of the Yeah. Was not a great one, but I, lo I loved it. I was... Um, I used to play on the back, so that's why I, I like watching back men hurling, you know. I have great admiration, say, for guys like, I used to love watching uh, these big men like Pat Hartigan uh, that used, would be able to combine strength and, and skill, you know. They'd yeah. be so ready on the feet, like the rock, like Dermot O'Sullivan, the cork pullback, you know, the way yeah. he'd be able to move. And the Hendersons, the Kilkenny, the Lohan, say, from Clare. Yeah, you know, I I was really fascinated with them. I think forwards get, get all, the all the glory, glory, you know, and all yeah. that. Yeah, I, I I love watching back men. I love uh, the the tackle. I love like uh, like Pat Delaney from um, Offaly, and you had great back men there. Like yeah. uh, Glory, who was on, he he was he was a tight back man uh, uh, as well. You know, yeah, and Jer Coughlin and all those were great lads. You know. Um, I'd have more, you know, I when you play the game, I suppose you know how difficult things are, or like what they're what they're going they through. They make it look there. easy, maybe, yeah. And um, Semple Stadium, to to a fabulous pitch. You need you need to be well prepared to go out on it, you know, because there's no place to hide out there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> any of these big pitches like Croke Park, all the eyes are on you, and absolutely, you know, and cameras as well. They're great people that take it on and do it, you know, and yeah. Forwards, yeah, you'd have to admire. Like I remember watching, was it in '97, 
the All Ireland quarter final, DJ Carey's performance against Galway. Yeah. He scored 2 8 that day, you know, and really the rest of the Kilkenny team weren't too good that day. And Galway uh, were ahead for, for an awful lot of the game, but DJ proved his magic, you know. And yeah. Of course, yeah. in self December, we saw the great, great goals. Julianne said that famous John Fenton goal. That's often the Maradona goal yeah. scored by um, Nicky English. Even last Sunday, the fabulous TJ Reid got a goal. Yeah, for I, 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 I could hear Daddy roar and I was minding the kids in the kitchen. I was down home yeah. and he was yeah, obviously... Was at the match one, oh, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was, but but everyone was talking. Really... I think it's the first, maybe since COVID and obviously the All-Ireland series and all that, but it's the, it's the first maybe match there's been real buzz about in a while, hurling match. I just felt it, it was... Is. Yeah, but yeah. there was that bit of magic, you know? And yeah. That's another legend will be ring build up around that absolutely you'll have to add it on on a chapter to the book (laughs) (laughs) and your own your favorite your own favorite matter uh, memory i suppose from sample then what would that be favorite memory well like in tipperary we always to the match we lost you know the 84 monster final yes and um we had great hopes in 84 being the centenary year that we had a team in tipperary that would Win Munster like we were uh, after we're going through what we call the famine since uh, the early 70s, and uh, we felt we had a team. And uh, this was the Munster final, it was a packed Semple Stadium. Cork had agreed to come up to play us because of the special year, yeah. it was. I don't think it was their turn to be there. But, um, our packed house, I was doing MC on the day, I remember, and um, uh. Oh, the, it was so close and we were ahead coming into the end of it and the joy and the emotion had spilled over too early, you know. Uh, Shawnee Leary turned the tables on us, you know, towards the end of the game, the great Cork forward, a great opportunist, you know, a goal poacher. And um, But we often think of that uh, game. It was one day described in the book, Raymond Smith says it it burnt to the very marrow of our bones. Wow. <laughs> you, know, you, you could write lines like that. Yeah, that, that describes it great. Yeah. Probably Ryan, the Tipperary hurler, says, there isn't a day he gets up, but he thinks about it, you know, that day, you know. You yeah, know, so. wow. That is powerful. It shows you the importance of hurling and how, you know, linked yeah. to our lives and our culture that it is. Indeed, yeah, yeah. And what's next for you now? Have you any more research? I, I'm, I, I know by you that you obviously always have some reading and project going on. Well, I'm kind of taking a break because we've gone through a busy time. Um, I brought out that volume two of the Thurla Sarsfield one um, towards the end of 21. Wow. But it had been lying around there and COVID had delayed its launch. Yeah. You know, so it was great to get that one out as well so um i'm sure i'm enjoying the break from it at the moment good but, um, yeah it, that's two I, big I, projects I know, I know i'll get hitchy feet after a while <laughs> and we'll get back to something else you know and the reaction to the book i suppose locally i'm sure has been um incredible because it's you know it's something that probably needed yeah. to be done as well as you know was a nice thing to do yeah, there has been a great reaction because it isn't merely a Tipperary book or a local book. Yeah. Any place there are hurlers and hurling and there are plenty of lovers of hurling all over. And um, they have loved it because a lot of them come back and they say, every page I open, there's a memory on every page, you know. Yeah, and I think it'd be a nice thing to send to maybe someone abroad now. Yeah, I have this reaction from Canada mm. and the States on it as well. And what people like is... The descriptions, they're not too long. Yes. And whether it is the modern age and somebody was saying to me about text messaging and getting a big message into just a few words. They, exactly. like, they like that, that you can take it down and read it a little bit. Yeah, it's a great way to and, do it. Yeah, yeah, and as you yeah. say, you can skip to the year or the match you're looking yeah, for and you want, might go back. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed all the other kind of, you know, the stories around it as well. So I think it all all came to, together beautifully. Yeah, all uh, the catering stories and all of that, the meat yeah. tea and the plain tea and the Yeah, and the guy who had the, the, the shop. Of food and then having a glut of food. Yeah. And the the beggar man and the amount of copper he, he collected 
uh, in his cap and changing it for into notes in the pub and you know all that. Yeah, know. great stories and about um, the guys around, um, who would kind of talk after the match long into the evening about, about right. the hurl and yeah, I, I it, it it brought it all together and yeah. you know captured it. So yeah. it's great to have it all there in a book for you know to pass it on. A, now. It was a great, it was a great um, consoling for me that he brought joy to so many. Oh people, yeah, you know because you know a lot of all things that you do in life. They they don't have consequence like it go unnoticed, yeah. Go unnoticed, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, congratulations, um, and thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us.